Uh, what's up everybody doing one of my favorite things there is been excited been waiting for it finally got a day off of work got my buddy with me and the weather is smiling upon us as you can see we are about eight miles offshore for our shallow water grouper season over here on the gulf coast and what we're going to try to do today is one of my favorite things to do and that's spearfish so we're going to try for some gag grouper kingfish hogfish and sometimes there's sheephead on this ledge that we're diving right here the only bad thing that I'm seeing is we have been greeted by what looks like some pretty green water. I don't know if you can see that. So clarity may be questionable. Might not be the world's best video, but we're out here. We're off. We're going to do some diving. Hang with me. Well, here we go. Feeling like a stuffed sausage. Bought this back whenever I was about 50 pounds lighter. Well, that was disappointing. Horrible views, we already knew that. Got to the bottom, normally the spot's loaded. Not seeing much, which is kind of hard to see with five foot of viz anyway, so. I think we're gonna try to find a clearer spot. This is not what at all we came for today. Sometimes you gotta salvage a day any way you can. Offshore was just too disgusting, couldn't see anything. So we came inshore to a spot that's got a deep channel and it is absolutely loaded with mullet. We've seen a cobia and a couple sheep heads. We're gonna try to get them as well. I am not a big fan of mullet fried, but smoked is one of the best tasting fish there is. So if we can get a good mess of these, I'm smoking some fish tomorrow.
Well, we didn't do amazingly well today. I don't know how good y'all can see that, but got a decent mess of mullet, some real good sized sheep head. Sadly, I didn't get those on camera because my buddy shot them. And he forgot his camera at the house today, but got some good eats, some fish tacos and some smoked mullet. Alright, it's the next day. I'm gonna get these uh, sheep head and mullet cleaned up. Like I already got the smoker going, so I'm gonna do some smoked mullet dip and eat some of the fillets today. Love smoked mullet. I'm not crazy about it fried, which is uh, probably the most common way down here, but smoked, there's just something awesome about it. The oils and fats that are in it just does a fantastic job. Y'all already heard me talk. Much as I love fish tacos, that's the one thing that I really love sheep head for is fish tacos. You'll see I've got this big serrated knife. Sheep have, have thick, thick scales and thick rib bones, which I usually just go ahead and cut through them. So when I bought this for grouper and sheep head, I fell in love with it. This makes cleaning so much easier since I don't scale these fish. So just come in behind the head. All right. Then I'll take my regular fillet knife like you see me do all my other fish and just come down the backbone. Come all the way through the tail. Lift that fillet up. And I just work this knife until I feel myself hit those thick rib cages. Take this knife. Work right through those. Take the fillet itself off. Now I'll clean it like I do any other fish. All right, now I'll clean these like you see me do all my other fish. Just come down until I touch the skin. Work that knife forward. And you're left with no meat on that skin. I like to 
come on in behind that rib cage. Cut that out. Some of this has a little bit of damage from where we were spear fishing them. So you want to cut that bloodshot meat out. And then on sheephead, they got this dark red line. They're kind of a stronger tasting fish. That's why I like them in uh, tacos so much, all that seething. But I'll kind of come, start coming, cutting some of that bloodline out, chunk it. That's how I'm going to cook them for tacos anyways. Come over here. Cut some more of that old thick bloodline out. And then I'll go ahead and uh, get that bloodshot meat out. Go ahead and cut these up in chunks again for some tacos. Now there's a decent amount of meat on the rib cages. So if you want to flip them over, you can kind of come down them and get you some more chunks off of it. I don't eat that darker tasting stuff. It just kind of has a muddy, stronger taste to it. Now as far as the mullet goes, I scale them, but I leave the skin on, and then I lay skin side down on my smoker. I just start working toward the head. All right, now as far as these mullet go, just like all the other fish, just come in behind the head. Cut down. I just leave rib cages and all on. We'll flip them over and smoke them just like that. <clears throat> all right, here's how I do it. Just put a little bit of charcoal down there to get me a coal bed started. Doesn't necessarily have to have that. It just speeds the process up. And then throw it, start throwing in some chunks of uh, pecan. That is the trick, pecan. Makes smoked mullet, smoked fish tip of any kind taste amazing. So I'll let all this burn down, kind of get some coals and chunks going there, and then I'll slowly add some pecan throughout the day as I'm smoking the fish, just to give it that little bit of flavor. All right, now that I got these mullet all cleaned up, I'm just gonna lay them out on the smoker, put a little bit of Tony Sashers on there. And I don't like to get these too seasoned up, because the flavor I'm looking for is that pecan wood. Then a little salt. Nope, I'm sorry. That Tony Sasher's got enough salt in it. I ain't putting any on there. A little bit of pepper. And a little sprinkle of garlic. That's the way I like it. Like I said, mainly, I'm just wanting this smoke. All right, I'm going to close that up. And let them go for a few hours. Since I'm going to make dip out of these, I actually prefer them to be a little dry because I'm going to put them in some wet ingredients. So I, uh, I'll just keep a check on them, but I may let them go two, three, four hours even until it starts wanting to peel off that skin and kind of feels almost a little dried out. Like I said, we're going to wet them back up in that dip. <sighs> I don't know if you can see me. The crap I go through for y'all. Just cutting onions. So that's the first ingredient, one small chopped onion. And yes, my eyes are really watering that bad. All right, well, apologize for the lighting. We're in our kitchen, not in a studio. That's the way it's gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is take this mullet and I'll start breaking it down just into, just rolling it up in my fingers. Hope y'all can see that. Just rolling it up, putting this bowl, slide that back. All right, so I'm breaking it apart, putting that bowl. It has one small chopped onion in it. I try not to put the skin in, but if you get some of it, it's not the end of the world. All 
just break it up. Don't forget, I didn't take the rib bones out, so we'll have to separate those. Nobody wants bones in their dip. All right, here's my non-world famous fish dip. And I'm probably gonna put some ingredients in there as such as this that people are gonna go, no, I do not make my fish dip with uh, the cream cheese that you find in most restaurants. I, I don't like the texture. It's not that I have a problem with cream cheese. I just don't like it in fish dip. It's so hard, it's so bulky. It just seems like that's the majority of the filler. There's hardly no fish in fish dip at a restaurant. But because I'm substituting that, I need something with a little sugar and something with a little tang. Miracle Whip works perfect. Buy you a little squeeze bottle, put it in there along with your mayonnaise. Trust me, you'll love it. My wife does not like Miracle Whip, but she loves this dip. Other people have ate this dip. They don't like Miracle Whip. They don't know they're eating it. It just gives you that sweet, tangy flavor that you need for a little bit of fish dip. And this bowl, I've got a few of those mullet. Don't forget, I already put one small white chopped onion in there. So all I'm gonna do now is add a decent amount of mayonnaise. And I'm sorry, I do not have any measurements for this. I've never measured this in my entire life. Nothing that goes in it. I've just always done it to taste. Here's a little bit of Miracle Whip. I'd probably say two to one on the Mayo to Miracle Whip. And I'll keep adding this as I go. A little bit of salt. I'm not gonna go crazy on the salt because I'll put a little bit of this uh, blackening seasoning in it and it does have salt. A little bit of garlic powder. Worcestershire. And I here's the cool thing about this. I do not like Worcestershire at all. Probably not saying that right. However, in this, it's excellent. Same thing with the Miracle Whip. People don't like it, but in this, they love it. A little bit of hot sauce. And because I discovered this a few years ago and fell in love with it, anything that calls for hot sauce, I put a little bit of this Chipotle hot sauce in as well. Fantastic flavor. This might look crazy hot, but it's not. I can't handle spicy. So trust me, this works. And I'll just give all this a really good mix. We do not like our fish dip really creamy, kind of like at the restaurants. Again, I don't feel like you're getting any fish in it. We like it somewhat chunky. So I'll give all this a good mix and find the texture that I like and keep tasting it and then I'll put it in the refrigerator and as you let it sit keep in mind it might not seem spicy now but as you let it sit and those flavors just kind of come together it will get a little spicier this is already looking about right although I still need to try it and sometimes I'll put a little bit of cayenne pepper in too if I feel like I need an extra kick almost a little too runny for me. There's the consistency that I'm looking for right there. What I'll do is mix this up, put it in the refrigerator for an hour or two, the longer the better. The flavors come together. And then serve it on some club crackers. All right, now the real critic is home from work. Let's see how I did. Just took this out of the freezer just to go ahead and cool it down quickly. It makes a heck of a difference. So what do you think? All right, I've got her approval. Looks like I did a good job. Just want to say thank you all that subscribed. Uh, the channel's kind of been blowing up this week, at least for a small channel standards. Picked up a lot of new subscribers. A crazy amount of views so thank y'all for that thank you for the comments it's cool getting to know some of y'all where you're from got a lot more videos planned here in the future I'm gonna kind of branch out from fishing although I try to include weekly fishing videos but just anything outdoor related I got a lot of stuff that uh, we do over our other property hunt and fishing tractor videos food plots you name it thank y'all for watching like share subscribe